This is part two of Amazing Places to See in North America. Lake Winnipesky. At 26 miles long and 15 miles across at its widest point, Lake Winnipesky is New Hampshire's largest lake. This glacial phenomenon has been a summer vacation hotspot for more than a century, attracting visitors from all over New England, including Boston, which is just a two-hour drive away. Dozens of islands add to the lake's scenic splendor, as do the surrounding OSB and Sandwich Mountain ranges. At Lake Winnipesky, you can hike, snowshoe, fish, and scuba dive. Also popular is the Canterbury Shaker Village, which hosts a museum preserving the history of the local Shaker community. The site was declared a National Historic Landmark in 1993. And there's a picture of the lake. I think it's very pretty. Odorney State Point State Park. This state park includes Odorney Point, the largest undeveloped stretch of shore on New Hampshire's 18-mile coast. Its spectacular oceanfront is backed by marshes, sand dunes, and dense vegetation. At, at ex an extensive network of trails, including a paved bike path, winds through the park. There are also picnic areas, a boat launch, and a playground. Kids will love visiting Ordoni's Sea Coast Science Center to learn about the many creatures they're likely to spot in the tide pools. All kinds of sea urchins, starfish, mollusks, and crabs inhabit the shoreline's intertidal zone. And when the tide is low, there are many opportunities to see them. Um, kids can get close up, can get up close and personal with the mysteries of the ocean at the Sea Coast Science Center located within Ordoni Point State Park. The center's touch tank invites visitors to do some hands-on exploring. And it has the little camera that we talked about in the introduction where it's a great spot for the kiddos, you know? <sighs> Lake Champlain. Samuel Day Champlain explored so much of New England that it is only fair to name the spectacular Lake Champlain after him. He discovered the lake in 1609 while in the Champlain Valley, which lies between Vermont's Green Mountains and the Ardonic Mountains of New York. Lake Champlain has since served the needs of merchants and mariners, scallywags and soldiers, smugglers and spies, and patriots and traders. The lake has seen its share of naval conflict, too. Warf warfare on its waters climaxed in 1814 when troops led by U.S. Commodore Thomas McDung defeated the British Navy in a fierce fight. During the 19th century, canal boats and steamboats carried coal, timber, iron ore, and grain across the lake. Today, industry has given way to recreation. Lake Champlain has become a year-round playground featuring boating, hiking, skiing, snowshoeing, snowmobiling, ice climbing, and rock climbing. Bicyclists take advantage of the Lake Champlain's bikeways, 35 loops, and 10 to 60 mile tours. Bounded by Vermont, New, New York, and Quebec, the lake's Allberg Peninsula juts southward from Quebec, making it one of the few places in the United States that can be that can only be reached through Canada. A more familiar north crossing extends through Ticonderoga, New York. Just east of the town is Fort Ticonderoga, a sterling 18th century fort with a museum and guided tours. And I think that is also a very pretty lake. Ben and Jerry's Factory. Vermont's top tourist attraction is Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream Factory in Waterbury. In the heart of the Green Mountains, Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield began making their ice cream in the neighborhood in 1978. Today, they sell their products all over the world. Children won't get bored because there are fun activities to occupy them. All around the brightly painted factory grounds are unusual items for kids to climb on, as well as a small playground and picnic tables. The tour offers a glimpse of the ice cream making process, but everyone's favorite part comes at the end when a sample of the flavor of the day is offered. Be sure to visit the Flavor Graveyard, where colorful tombstones honor dearly departed flavors such as Fred and Ginger and Holy Cannoli. Gone but not forgotten, the many ice cream flavors retired by Ben and Jerry's have been given a final resting place. 
And I think that's kind of funny that they have a whole cemetery. And it's got the little camera thing, too. <sighs> Green Mountains. The Green Mountains of Vermont are full of surprises. The historic range is a great place for caving, hiking, skiing, and gawking at the splendid natural beauty. The 250-mile-long Green Mountains become the Berkshires in the south, to the south in Massachusetts, to the west is Lake Champlain, and to the east are the White Mountains of New Hampshire. The 400,000-acre Green Mountain National Forest is the public's entry to the mountains. The National Forest was formed in 1932 after floods and fires ex exacerbated by extensive logging threatened the region. A fighting spirit. Thanks to Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys, the mountain range's name rings in history. Allen was the guerrilla leader who first fought against the Providence of New York and later resisted the British, helping lead Vermont to its brief 14-year independence starting in 1777. And there's the little view of the mountain ranges in the park. <laughs> 